Hello everyone, marhaba. Are you ready to dive into the next level of our podcast with this whole new renovated look and feel? I know we are. Our mission is to create even more enjoyable and engaging and hopefully insightful podcasts for all of you, our cherished listeners. Tune in now and prepare to go on a journey with us as we redefine the way you see sound and hear style. Thank you for joining the podcast by Shalhoub Group. My name is Lena Al-Khatib. I'm the Group Head of Communication, and I'm very, very excited to have with me today a very special guest and a special topic. Now imagine a company, imagine all companies, where leaders are truly taken on a journey to be inspired, to learn, to grow, to develop, and more importantly, to inspire and help to grow their teams along the journey. Yes, today we are talking about leadership and development programs. I'm not going to lie, it's also a great topic that I love personally, and it's dear to my heart as usual. But today it's really about the importance of all these leadership trainings. What makes them relevant in our day and age? What makes them still important and captivating to the senior leaders at organizations? And most importantly, how can people apply them in real life? And speaking of applying them in real life, my guest today has gone on a leadership program on a great journey that he's here to share with you. But on this journey, he also learned storytelling techniques. So I'm not going to spoil who he is or his intro. I'm just going to give him the camera. Thank you, Lynn. Hello, everybody. My name is Aurélien. I'm from France, and I joined Chaloup Group two years ago. Ten years ago, I graduated from a university in France, and I was so happy to graduate from this university. However, something kept in my mind during those ten, last 10 years that I always wanted to attend an American university. And of course, when you say American university, there is something that ring a bell. It's Harvard Business School. Everybody knows Harvard Business School. And I was thinking like, okay, it's too late now. It was 10 years ago and it won't be possible. However, it was a huge surprise for me to see that Last year, I could enroll in an executive program with Harvard Business School, and this is what I want to talk to you about today. Welcome, Aurelia, and thank you for this great introduction. And I'm so happy as a nerd myself to see the passion that you have for learning and, and growth. So today we want to discuss your experience and the leadership program that you attended at Harvard Business School. But really, it's not just about the program. I think what you mentioned here is two things that struck to my mind. is the school of life and the school where you get courses and get educated. So being in the school of life for 10 years in your career, you've obviously have a different way to make that decision. The motivations to go to this program, but maybe not the same one that you would have gone to 10 years ago. Tell me more about your motivation. Yeah, that's a great question. Actually, when you think about the 70, 20, 10, all right, you don't think that after 10 years, I'm going back to school and learn yeah. something which is very theoretical. Um, but I have to admit that um, I was not thinking about this. I was really not thinking about this. And thanks to my very great leadership that I have, big thanks to Michael and, and Claire for this. They came to me with a proposal with different programs that we can attend. So in Shalup Group, we have what we call an IDP, which is an individual development program. And this is where we can understand what are the form of learning we want to, uh, to tackle for, for the year coming, right? There is many different forms of learning, uh, job shadowing, second man, learning program, executive program, and so on and so forth. They came to me with this program, among others, which is the program for leadership development of Harvard Business School. And when I tried and I started to investigate on this program, my mind was completely blown away. Like the tagline was, HBS is trying to create leaders that can, that can make an impact on the world. So for me, it was, was really talking to me, right? Because I wish I can make an impact to, to the world as a leader or aspirational leader. And then the program was seven months program, two, uh, uh, twice, three months online, twice, two weeks on site on the HBS campus. Uh, and all the concepts which, which are coming with the cold call, the case studies, the fact that they don't give you any answers they don't give you any right answer. They give you right answer, wrong answer. They just give you a way to find your answers, which I, I really love. The coaching also program, which is embedded to this, to this program. So for me, it was really a way to be among a lot of leaders. I was one of the youngest of this program. So the, the average age was 40 years old plus. And to be surrounded with leaders from all over the world. 
and coming from different parts of the world, coming from North America, but also from Middle East, from Asia, from, from Africa, from Europe, and also coming from different backgrounds. Like I was not only surrounded by people working in retail or in technology, but also people working as a doctor, as a VC, as, as private equity. And the, the diversity of background in terms of gender, uh, culture, uh, experience was so amazing that I wanted to attend this program. And after completing it, it was you way, right. way above expectation. So in all these seven months, hybrid learning, one word, what would you say about this? It's difficult to find one word, but I think that one, it's elevating. It's really, mm. wow. In fact, learning is a lifelong habit and you should never stop to learn, not only from books, from, uh, from podcasts, uh, from uh, any courses, but also for, by talking to people and trying to understand a different perspective. For me, what it was really elevating to think that I come with my expertise and my experience in technology since 10 years as a consultant, as a corporate in Chaloub and, and so on and so forth. But finally, there is still thing that you can learn and discover and it, it's amazing. Well, one thing that uh, we all want to learn that 40 plus is not that much older. So that's <laughs> hopefully <laughs> one thing they also uh, gave you that perspective. But uh, I'm, I mean, I'm very happy to, to see the passion and the energy that you have. I mean, you're uh, the tech business partner at our group for our joint venture brands. You really add value a lot and from your expertise, from a functional perspective. And in this leadership program, I think you learn two things, things that you can use within your function as strategies and, and other things that you use as a leader, right? And we wanted to talk about this for our listeners to tell them a little bit about your journey from the learning perspective, what you used in the job and on a personal level. So let's start with any aha moments that you had. Oh, I wasn't thinking of it this way. I could apply this at work. What were things that, uh, that gave you this aha moment? So for me, the biggest aha moment was that it was really stretch for me because on top of my job, I had to attend all those classes online and then on site and everything. So it was roughly 10 to 15 hours a week on top of my work that I had to find. Uh, plus when I was on site in, uh, in Boston with uh, eight hours, the time zone difference I had to be super focused. So for me, my boss always asked me to say no more and to delegate more. And I was always telling him, no, I cannot, I cannot. But in this case, I had to. So it was awkward for me to learn it this way. But finally, I learned to say to people, no, I cannot do it. And if it's an emergency, we have to find someone else to do it. So it really helped me to better manage my workload. And then I realized that I was not maybe focusing 100% of my time on the work which, which deserved the, the time and the energy I was, I was spending on. And now I'm spending more time on the work that deserves this energy that I have to spend off. And the rest is just delegated or disappear of, uh, of, of my to-do. So for me, it was a bit aha moment to discover this that way. But I think that now my boss is happy. <laughs> and so my wife. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, I mean, when you're forced to, to split your time, I think we all can do better at time management. That's 100% sure, especially when we have the motivation for something, right? I think we put off the important things, but when we commit, that's, uh, it's, yeah, we find that we could do more in the time that we have. So this leadership program that was, you know, um, required a lot of travel, it had case studies. And I know when we were discussing offline, you said it was based on case studies, on groups, on discussions. So tell me a little bit about the learnings, a particular unconventional thing you learned or a business case that you worked on that shifted your mindset. So the case study is really the signature of the HBS classes in MBA and executive program. And basically we had in two weeks, like 30 classes. Each classes has its own case study, which is roughly 30 pages including the exhibit. And this is something that you have to prepare before the class starts. Mm. So there is three layers in this uh, case study. The first one is yourself. You have to read it, you have to understand it. And then to understand where the teacher is going to go and which framework is going to introduce to you. Then you review this case study with your learning group because you're living with seven other people. It's a learning group of eight. And then you wake up together, you go to gym together, you have lunch together, you, you, you work on the case study very late together every day from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. you're together basically. And then 
when you are in the class, then you review those uh, those business uh, cases with uh, with the class. Uh, we had a lot of different business cases on uh, leadership, on team and organization of team, on marketing, on accounting, on ethics, uh, on economics. So all of them were amazing. We had amazing teacher. So we had one of our cases, uh, which were uh, focused on one huge company, which is dedicated to travel, which is based in Northern Europe. And they came to a very difficult problem, like really a disaster problem uh, caused by a natural disaster. And we had to put our foot in the shoes of the CEO in the first six hours when maybe people are, are dead and they have to take a lot of action and then they have to communicate to the public and private and publicly and etc. And then it was so intense because the way the, 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 the class was done, even we knew, we knew everything through the, the case study and everything before, we had really to, 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 to leave it and to understand, okay, maybe tomorrow I will be this CEO and I will have to take those kind of action and those kind of decision. And that's really, really difficult. And that was really a way for us to project ourselves and to think that in life, it's really difficult to always take the right decision. You have to be surrounded with the right people. That's uh, the, the, what the, the, the good leader are doing. And also you have to make sure that you are sure of your decision and you accept that that might not be the perfect decision. That might not be the best decision, but that's the decision you have to take at this time. You have to trust you, you have to trust your team and you have to go. It's uh, very hard to be uh, the CEO, <laughs> not just any leader. And uh, there are a lot of consequences to the decisions. And I'm sure that when you're simulating this and you're in your shoes, you you feel it more. But then you also um, told me about something you applied within your scope as well when you came back. Like, tell me a bit more of what you applied in your, you know, with your team members and the cross-functional team you work with. So on top of uh, the case study, the different learning that we had, so we had one day with an actor which were helping us to elevate our storytelling technique, uh, another day with uh, 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 an expert in change management to understand our immunity to change and how to elevate. We also had, uh, during the module three, uh, the opportunity to work on our uh, leadership challenge, right? And when we work on that, Mia was applying this to Shaloub, of course, and I tried to see with our team what we were doing right and what where we could have possibly an area of improvement. And there is so many steps to do this leadership assignment. And I was thinking, right, without uh, false humility that, no, why, why should I do that, right? This, I already have the answer, right? But then they forced me through my coach or so, big shout out to, to Eta who, who helped me on that to really deep dive each and every step that they requested in the sequence they requested. And I realized by deep diving some of the steps that something I was sure I knew everything and I was 100% sure that, no, that was not the case. And there is something that I was missing and those small things was a secret. And when I discovered that and I deep dive that and I discovered this with my colleagues and my peers and the people I was working on, we realized that the way we were applying some governance was not the best way to ensure that our partners were going to be understood and we could really help them. So really all step back, took this into consideration, take to this, uh, to this framework and method, and we sit together and then we enhance the way we are going to collaborate to ensure that we can better understand our partners. But finally, it was a small, tiny thing that nobody was looking at. And through this method and through this framework, we really deep dive it and now we are, we are trying to apply it. And hopefully by the end of the year, I will give you an update. <laughs> <laughs> so I can say that you really took the learnings and practically applied them. And that impacted Absolutely. your um, the role that you play. So that's uh, very uh, good to hear that you can actually apply it. Because often, you know, what people say is we go to the trainings and then everyone comes back, gets back to their normal day-to-day -day business and forget and they don't implement it. So uh, implementation and application in real life is very, very important. So how, you know, do you feel this, I mean, other than the practical tip you, you just gave and the actual use of, of the tools and methodologies, how do you think this might impact your career trajectory and how do you think of growing as, as a leader yourself? So I, I think there, there are two things actually, right? The first thing is that what I loved is that I didn't come with a problem and they gave me a solution, right? Whatever my problem is, 
they gave me a way to tackle those problems to find a solution. So this thing that I applied, which were successful, uh, which is going to be successful hopefully, is really something I'm going to do often and often. Like I discussed with my with my boss, and this is really something we want to do on a quarterly basis to ensure that we don't stay on the status quo. And then we always challenge our modus operandi. We always challenge our governance. We always challenge how we are doing things. And then we implement tool processes and methods to ensure that we can elevate that. That's the first thing. The second thing for me is that the knowledge learned is a knowledge shared. And I learned so much from this experience that now I really want to give it back. So when I did this experience, I didn't have uh, any people I was uh, managing, which is not the case now. I have two people and I'm so happy to have them. So I'm really trying to understand all the things that I learned, how they can benefit from that through different techniques. And also through one of our program in Shaloub, which is side-by-side -side mentoring. So I had one mentee when I started this, uh, this, um, this program. And by the beginning of September, I will have three. So it's really to understand, of course, I can share a lot from my hard skills, like uh, technology, digital e-commerce, data, uh, project management, and so on and so forth. But I really want to go on the soft skills part now, more on the conflict management, stakeholder management, risk management, and understand how I can really elevate those people through different techniques again, to understand how they could make a difference through those different uh, techniques. So it's really, I get a lot from this experience and I want to share as much as possible. And of course, encourage all those people, my mentee, the people I am managing, but the rest of the group to really get more knowledge on what we do at Shaloub in terms of IDP, in, term, in terms of Shaloub University, in terms of learning, because I worked for a lot of company before. That's the first time that someone from human resources, human capital and people and from leadership comes to me to say, by the way, we have this program. It's amazing. Do you want to be part of that? And we have a chance here in Shaloub and we should uh, say it. Thank you very much for sharing already with a lot of people. So you're already giving back to all the listeners who are listening. A lot of them are students from universities or job seekers. And really, um, this could help them to challenge themselves, look at how they're doing things. Uh, so thank you. You're already doing that. Now, I know there was a lot of learning and a lot of hard work and efforts put, but also there was fun. Yes. So we want to know all the fun that you had as well. And, you know, tell us an embarrassing moment that you had in that experience. So one embarrassing moment. So <laughs> when we had this, uh, so we have a, a bunch of actors, real actors, right? Who came to help us, to teach us some storytelling technique, etc. And then we, we all say a few stories and we did it in the learning group. So it was only eight people. So me, I did the stories when uh, my wife gave birth to our second daughter in Luxembourg at the beginning of the pandemic. And uh, I said to her, you're, only, you're the only one in Luxembourg, so I will be with you, don't worry, and I'm strong and I will survive everything that you are going through. But then when I saw a small piece of blood, I just fainted. <laughs> so I said this story in the learning group and everybody was uh, super, <laughs> super uh, laughing on this story. And then the actor said, okay, can you say this story with, in front of 180 people? But that was a bit awkward because I did all the <laughs> gesture and everything also <laughs> to, to, to share this story with, uh, with everybody. Well, I think um, storytelling is really important. And when you start learning it through experiences that are funny or things in real life, but I think in leadership and presentation skills, for example, storytelling can be very powerful. So for us as a communication team, we do lean on storytelling a lot, uh, but I'm glad you had your fun doing storytelling. So now we want your support also to do that when we do our internal presentations and, um, and meetings. I want to leave, you know, the listeners and uh, people with what would be Aurelian's quote, like if you were the future CEO of a company and the future a uh, leader leading hundreds of people and they would quote you. Do you have any idea of that, what this quote would be? So just after I completed this program, uh, a Harvard Business Review article came out and the title of this Harvard Business Review article was uh, Learning is a Lifelong Habit. And I think for me, it's, it's, it's a perfect quote. In the world we are today, it's true, right? Like technology, me, I'm working in technology, it's changing every day. We have new provider, new solution, new processes with AI is going super fast now. So we have to be, to be up to date on everything related to our field. 
But we have to be up to date also on the different way of management. And this is changing every day also, right? After the pandemic, now we have a new way of working, more hybrid, more work from home, more work remotely. So we have to understand what are the expectations of the people surrounding us. And we have to understand how we can understand them and treat them. And I think this is important that we all try to learn, not necessarily on our field, but on the other field. And we tr all try to be up to date on the different things that's, uh, that's happening and how the world is evolving. I love that. Learning is a habit and the habits are a set of actions that you do consciously, right? So it's people who choose to learn and choose to up upskill themselves. So uh, that's really beautiful. Um, maybe I'll wrap up what I learned from you today. I think you really talked about uh, pursuing learning as a habit. So that's an action you have to do and you have to learn on the job, but also seek Uh, academic, if, if we say academic uh, learning journeys as well that could upskill you. Um, make sure to always challenge yourself and your status quo and how you do business. Don't be too sure that you are 100% right and um, give back and really share your um, knowledge with others. Did I wrap it correctly or would you like to add anything? Absolutely, Lynn. Uh, I think you nailed it. Uh, I think that if I could add a few things on my side, that maybe we didn't mention during this, uh, this podcast, that will be first, don't take yourself too seriously. I mean, I was surrounded by very senior leaders from all over the world and the best company in the world, and they didn't take themselves seriously at all. The second thing is something that has been mentioned by Professor Margolis, which is uh, the head of this uh, program, which is listen more and smile. <laughs> It's important well, to- Well, you're doing it well on our podcast, I can say. <laughs> so we have to listen a lot. Uh, and especially when we came back with all those knowledge, we have to still keep it for us, right? And listen more and only talk when it's necessary. And also don't think that it's not the right time because it's never the right time. So when I took the decision for me, it was not the right time at all, but I was thinking it will never be the right time. So let's do it. And it's coming to my last point, which is that uh, now I want to learn everything anytime. So I'm starting from next month, intensive Arabic classes. Ooh. So let's see if next podcast we can do it in Arabic. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, no, it just gave me the envy to learn, 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 learn anything, anytime for the rest of my life. Aurélien, the tech partner, the leader, the dad, and the active learner. Thank you very much for joining our podcast. It was such a pleasure. Thank you for sharing your experience with everyone. Thank you all for listening, for tuning in. And as usual, we always ask for your feedback. Tell us the topics you'd like to hear more of. And hopefully I'll see you next month.